Hey everybody, welcome back to the Grognard's Corner. We're actually back in the actual Grognard's Corner for a change where we're not at the computer and we're actually getting some stuff back on the table and we're doing something a little bit different this time. We're taking a look and diving into sports games. Now I can hear some of you out there already going, but original Grognard sports games aren't war games and you do war games. Well, yes, I do war games, but I also, in the dim recesses of the past, did enjoy sports games. Back in high school, when I first started getting into uh, tabletop war gaming, uh, my next door neighbor, his dad, not only got me interested in tabletop war gaming with Squad Leader, but he also owned several Avalon Hill sports titles and just a bunch of sports titles in general. There was. Uh, uh, title bout boxing, there was a college basketball game, there was one of the status pro footballs, there was a whole whole passel of sports games that uh, my buddy Mike and I used to play, and I, as, as the years went by, I kind of kind of got away from it, but I always had an interest in, in sports games, because a lot of sports games deal with stats, and numbers, and have charts, and dice rolling, and random events, and I like charts and stats and numbers and dice rolling and number crunching and things like that so uh a couple months ago i i kind of got the bug bitten in again and you know i, I hit up one of the facebook groups and uh, you say, hey, you know, guys, I'm lo lo looking to want to get back into uh, some sports game and i'm looking at either and at the time i was thinking mostly football and uh, so I said, hey, you know, uh, what are you guys' opinions on uh, Stratomatic and Status Pro football? Because those, those really are the two big ones out there. And, you know, a few people gave me, gave me their inputs. And then uh, and Mr. Derek Case, the, the, the Chuck Norris of, of game, board game reviews himself. And if you are not a member of his uh, video channel, uh... I completely forgot what his channel is. Single War Game. See, ah, I'll put it in the post. I'll put it in the notes. I'm sorry, Derek. I forgot your channel. Um, he said, "Hey, check out this guy, Al Will Al Winsom's Al Wilson." Oh God, I forgot that name too. See, this is why I'm not a clever man. I don't take notes, and I don't. I I checked it beforehand. I just don't write it down. Anyways, um, check out this guy's uh, video channel because he does a lot of uh, sports game reviews, and he also did a lot. He also does a lot of video game review or uh, game review for like uh, solitaire games and uh, victory point games which I thought were really cool well and I was started looking at the status pro and and stratomatic and it's like yeah all right yeah those are about the way I kind of remember it then I started seeing uh, the the videos he was doing for other sports games and the next thing I know like 10 hours had passed and I had spent the entire day watching sports review games and had gotten a lot of really good websites that do a lot of really good sports games. So I went over to the one that, that, that kind of intrigued me the most, play.com, P-L-A-A-Y.com, and they had a football game, um, second season football, that I was really, really looking at. But they had also done a NASCAR racing game, which I, I, I kind of dig on NASCAR, and they had uh, th this wrestling game that really kind of caught my eye. So I decided, all right, well, I can only afford one of these. And fortunately, the games aren't, aren't very expensive. Most of the games over Play.com are $44. And fortunately, that includes shipping and handling, at least inside the States. So that right there is like, you know, I saw the price initially, $44. You know, probably going to have to come up with $12 extra. Everybody knows I'm unemployed. You know, I don't have a lot of money, so it's like, ah, all right. But then I found out it was ship, for shipping to hand that was included. So I, all right, well, that's a bigger selling point. And so I ended up getting face to the mat, pro wrestling simulation board game. Um, now some of you may find this a little bit, a little bit odd and unique coming from the original Grognard himself. I kind of like wrestling. I don't like what the WWE and WWF have 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 morphed into. Um, I was a huge fan back in the early mid '80s. You know the Hulk Hogan era. You know Andre the Giant. You know right when it was starting to get into its entertainment level. And on Saturday nights, my my normal Saturday night routine was that uh, on on one of the local channels here in Seattle, there was at eight o'clock was Kung Fu Theater, which was always a hoot. Um, at 10 o'clock was Elvira's House of Mystery, which for those of you who don't know was kind of the precursor to MSK 3000 or Mystery Science Theater 3000. 
a delightful show. I enjoyed watching because I like bad horror movies. Anybody who's watched the channel has uh, heard me comment on a few times. And then at midnight, they had, uh, I think it was first POW, which was Powerful Women of Wrestling, and then GLOW, Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling, which was really over-the-top theatrical female wrestling. I mean, they were doing stuff years, and they had skits and storylines years before the WWE, before Vince McMahon started doing a lot of his stuff in uh, in the WWE, um, so I always I, I always I always got a kick out of that, and so I, so I've always kind of had a fascination with wrestling. I was, I was and I saw this game. It's like, ooh, this looks really cool. Watch the videos on it. All right, it's really cool. And then I then I discovered that you could make up your own wrestlers. All right, that sold me. All right, so I could make up my own wrestlers, make up my own wrestling league, and do my own thing. So I got it. And we're going to kind of do a couple things. We're going to we're going to we're going to, we're going to take a look at the box. Uh, we're going to look at the contents, and we're going to play a quick match. Now, the first thing I need to say about Face to the Mat is this is not really a detailed in the ring wrestling simulation. You are not figuring out what you're doing each wrestlers move that they are doing. It's not that detailed. It's not like a lot of football games where you know. All right, I'm going with a 3-4 nickel. The opponent's going for, uh, you know, a, a medium pass. Check the charts. This is more a le wrestling league simulation. For the most part, you kind of decide who your wrestlers are, who they're going to be facing off, and then the action deck kind of lets you know all what's going on. But more on that in a little bit. But anyway, so here is face to the mat wrestling and it is not a thin box but really you don't need a very thick box for this very very beautiful back design i mean i do not see many games that have this much on the back of it but so it's nice good sturdy map or box and uh, already I've, I've been playing it for a while and i've already took out a bunch of stuff cool thing is came with it with a little uh a little plastic baggie that had, you know, all the counters you needed. I've been using the red and blue ones because I like red and blue. And you get a couple dice with it. You know, dice or dice. We love dice. Um, and it comes with uh, one of the season's wrestling cards. Now, these wrestlers that they have are kind of all made up. Evidently, uh, they, they tried to go with actual wrestlers one year but kind of got smacked down pretty hard because evidently most of the wrestlers' names are trademarked, and since they're making money off of it, they can't. So they eventually just went ahead and uh, made up their own wrestlers. And, you know, it comes with what, 24, 36 wrestlers. And there's there are, there are a couple other seasons of stuff that you can order. Um, the intent is you're supposed to write on these. You'll see these little things here called the TV grade and grudge grade. Those kind of fluctuate uh, throughout the league. Hell, they fluctuate from game to game, match to match sometimes. Um, so the intent is use a pencil and erase it. Part of me is thinking about laminating them. Um, these, like I said, these are the masters. I haven't, I haven't punched these out yet. I really haven't quite decided what I'm doing with them um, because, like I said, I made my own, I made my own wrestling league. It's mainly a solitaire game, but there are strategy cards for managers to use if doing. You know, head-to-head -head gameplay. But like I said, I, the, the appeal of the game is the actual solitaire play itself. And it gives you a couple uh, couple sheets for, you know, that you can copy out so you can keep track of all your, your matches and everything. Uh, there's a, uh, The guys over at Play.com uh, I've posted some uh, variants that other people have done, and uh, so if you go over there, they've got some really good free stuff. And here's a blank sheet, and this is what I basically based my wrestlers off of. I kind of scanned this and then spent like two and a half days going through and uh, photoshopping it so I could get my wrestlers on there. And it comes with these two full color mats, and these are basically where all the gameplay takes place. This is actually where the wrestle match occurs when you get to it, and we'll be getting into that. And then another another uh, sheet up here uh, for 
things that could in, could influence the match. You know, the 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 favored wrestler's ally, their foe, the underdog's ally, foe, and. Uh, People with the highest grudge grade, they have an opportunity that they'll sometimes jump into the into the wrestling match and kind of mess with things. Um, it comes with this really cool action deck, and we'll be getting the action deck in a little bit. But this action deck is how you determine what happens in the ring. Now, if you look at this, not only are the cards flippable, but they're also double-sided. So each card has a potential of four different results on it, and there's, you know, I should have counted this beforehand, but you know, 40, 50 cards, so, you know, 160 some odd different results that can come up in a match, <clears throat> or each move in a match. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, it's not the first time I've seen that. Uh, Status Pro actually uses that for their, uh, uh, for their pitching, the the uh, two halves flip upside down, double sided, and the one thing that I thought was the absolute greatest. Okay, so here's the rule book. It's a small rule book, not too much to it, but you know, it's got this nice plastic cover, and then it goes into you know the actual rules. Font's a little bit small, but. Oh my god, there are charts and tables. There are like 30 different random charts and tables in this game. Um, then you have the rules for creating your own wrestler. And then the actual rules of the game itself. The actual rules for the game are like five pages long. But the thing I love about this the most... Oh my god, it's ring bound. I can lay it flat and open it up and not have to worry about breaking the spine. Oh my God, I don't know why more game companies don't do this. I absolutely freaking love that this is ring bound. All right, yeah, I'm getting a little too excited about that. <laughs> All right, so basically, uh, if, for what you do for gameplay, as like I said, you, you run as kind of the lead commissioner. And you decide who is all in your league. And I went with uh, I went with 24 wrestlers, and I made up uh, 12 independent wrestlers, or 12 single wrestlers, and three tag teams, or six tag teams. And so you know, here's here's one of the cards that I made up. This is a uh, Major Babe, Barbara Ann Benson, U.S. Army. These are her skills here. She's favorite, quick, mean object. We've got her specialty there and her finisher, her TV grade and her grudge grade. Now, originally I was going to laminate these, but I decided to hold off laminating them until I, I got through a couple games because I wasn't sure if I had enough uh, skills and stats on them. Um, and honestly, I'm finding that using a, writing lightly on a pencil with them and erasing them really doesn't hurt it. And if I need to, <laughs> just go in and print out another cardstock sheet. Um, so yeah, here's here's one of my tag teams, the California Princesses, with uh, and that's Buffy of the California Princesses, and the Workers Party is another one of my tag teams. There's Ping, and the Valkyries. So yeah, I I, I kind of had fun making up a bunch of wrestlers, and I plan on bringing more in. I, I figured 24 would be good to start off with. So I started off with my with my first uh, my first evening. As we're going to see, here's kind of the notes I've made so far. I, I, I really don't think y'all are going to be able to read my handwriting. <laughs> but basically we had three normal uh, normal matches that went down. And then we had the, the, the always infamous interview segment. And then I did a, a, a cage match. And then the, uh, the, the big uh, uh, highlight, the, the, the big uh, title, I guess that's what it's called. The, the event that everybody's there for. You know, all the rest of them were just leading up to this. And honestly, it probably took me, there was what, one, two, three, I did what, four matches plus the interview segment. And I think it took me about an hour to go through totally to do all those. So what we're gonna do is, since I'm actually doing the last the last uh, wrestling match of the evening for my, for my, for my fake, league here the uh i call it the ww the pacific northwest www.com league the wild women of wrestling combative league 
Yeah, I know. Not it, It's kind of cheesy, but, you know, I was trying to keep with the Seattle area vibe and feel and kind of go with the pow and glow. And you don't like it, I don't care. You got something better, send me send me your suggestions. So, all right. So, first of all, we're, we, what you do is you take a look at who the two people are going to be facing off against. And there are rules for cage matches, and there are rules for tag teams, and free-for-alls, and stuff like that. I haven't gotten to that yet, so we're just doing a normal, off-the-cuff, normal match. And this is going to be between the face gal, the face of www.com, Miss Wonderful Gal, the caped heroine of Seattle. And she is going to be going up against the Dominatrix. Yeah, all right, like I said, cheesy names, but hey, try you try coming up with 24 wrestling style names. Okay, now, you gotta always figure out who the favorite wrestler is and who the underdog wrestler is. So favorite, it's real easy. If they've got the favorite trait, Go ahead and take a look real quick right here. You see that? Favorite. She's also powerful and strong. She's got a double A rating, no grudge. Her specialty is the powered reverse hammer lock, and her finisher is the justice from above high jump flying kick. Yeah, try coming up with a bunch of moves like that after a while. Most of them are <laughs> left, still left blank. Um, if they've got the favorite uh, uh, trait, they go into the favored. If the person has the cheat skill they automatically go into the underdog and if neither wrestler has favored not favorite neither wrestler has cheated goes whoever has the highest grudge grade goes into the underdog position so once you get done with that uh here you've got the 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 other mat up here uh the two highest grudge grade good grudge grades in the league go into their two positions uh higher grudge grade indicates uh higher grudge grade i can talk honestly indicates uh, more, <laughs> more possibility of doing something violent and getting involved in somebody. And so for currently what we have, uh, our two highest grudge grades in the www.com is Pong from the Workers' Party tag team. She's got a grudge grade of six. And Jubilee Jane, who's one of our favorite, favorite wrestlers, um, she's got a grudge grade of five. So those two go in there. And now each wrestler has a favorite ally, or has an ally and a foe. So for Miss Wonderful Gal, uh, and you can, uh, the game is very, very narrative. And after a couple rounds, you start to see storylines start to develop with just the sheer amount of random. We'll be getting into that into a little bit. Um, so right now, one, Miss Wonderful Gal and Dominatrix, neither one have ever been in the ring, don't really have too much of a... Uh, of a, of, a, of a history for that. So what we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna go ahead and put Major Babe as the ally for Miss Wonderful Gal. And the enemy, who's gonna be the enemy? Who's gonna be her enemy? Let's go with, ah, the hit woman, Natasha Denov. That's gonna be her foe. And let's see, the underdog's ally Let's go with, you know what, we are going, okay, we know who, okay, now where is it, where is it, here I am trying to go through all 24 of my cards, oh, there we go, Chocolate Lightning, <laughs> Chocolate Lightning, uh, female wrestlers kind of started off originally as a neutral, but in the first match through a series of random events, ended up getting the cheat quality, so she is now considered a heel. Um, and the dominatrix's foe is the headmistress. The headmistress and the dominatrix do not get along, so we're going to go ahead and put that there. All right, so now that that's set up, now we have to determine what happens in pre-match. Um, let's go ahead and lower the camera a little bit because I don't need to be zoomed out so far. Let's see if I can do this without making all of you sick. if I can actually do it at all. People think I'm joking when I say I'm not a clever man. <laughs> all right. That looks good right there. All right. Um, both wrestlers start off with uh, their chips on the start track. And I'm probably going to butcher some of these rules because, like I said, I I've played three matches so far. So I'm sure I haven't got all the rules down. So, but before every match, you always have a pre-match highlight reel. So you got to roll a dice to see which one of the random tables you go to. 
It helps if I roll it on the table. So there was a three. So we use highlight real O. So we go to highlight real O in the rule book. And like I said, there are over 30 of these tables. And that's what this one is. And then we roll dice again, and we roll it like we were reading them like a percentile. We'll go with the whites as the tens column. So we had a 24, and a 24. <gasps> Underdog wrestler given ultimatum by the commissioner. Win next match or leave the federation. Wow. Okay, so so my, uh, my, uh, my commissioner, me, sort of, I guess you could say, or my persona, or the persona of the commissioner for the WWW is Maurice Von Hoofen. He's not a nice person. So he's basically told that the dominatrix needs to win or she's going to be kicked out of the Federation. Makes for a good story, don't you think? Well, we'll see what happens. All right, so that's the pre-match. So now what we do is we start with the action deck. So let's go ahead and you flip the first card. You look for this skill, so we're right here is we've got powerful. So we look to here to, to you go from the you start with the favorite. You see if they've got the same stat. They do have powerful. And you'll also notice there's all these symbols by them. If it is a star, it means it is a ability that can be used any time during the match. If it's a circle, it's an ability that they can only use when their score token is on the matching symbol. So if it's on a circle, they can use it on a circle. And if you notice over here, like the dominatrix has smart and object, which are squares, she can only use those other squares. Basically, circle represents the early game, uh, and squares represent their late game. So, uh, with powerful, Miss Wonderf Wonderful Gal has powerful, and the dominatrix does not. So, we get one point, body toss of opponent into turnbuckle. And but it also has this little note here: heavy opponent not tossed. Heavy opponents are really heavy; they can't be tossed. So, Miss Wonderful Gal gets one point, and then you drew the next one. Mean, okay, Miss Wonderful Gal does not have it, nor does the Dominatrix. So that one is ignored. So you also got to keep track. Um, there, there is an optional rule that I like to use. It's called the Boo Rule. That uh, if you go three cards without anybody scoring, then the favored wrestler gets one d6. And this is why I was kind of saying that I needed to keep an eye on uh, on not laminating my sheets yet because I'm not really quite sure a lot of my wrestlers have enough stats on them yet. So the boo rule has come up a couple times yet. All right, so we've got strong, which Miss Wonderful has, and the Dominatrix does not. So we've got strong circle, and it is a circle, so we score it, and one point, unaffected by opponent's bruising body job. So she scores another point. Not looking good for the dominatrix so far. Strong again, I swore I shuffled these. <laughs> okay, so we got another strong, most wonderful gal, dominatrix does not, one point. Favorite. Okay, well, Miss Wonderful Gal is the favorite. And so she gets one more point. Pumped up by the ground. Really looking bad for the Dominatrix. Heavy. Okay, neither wrestler has heavy. And we have a TV move. Okay, goes to whoever has the highest TV rating. Miss Wonderful Gal has a double A. The Dominatrix has an A. Now that's one of those stats that can change. So, so we got a a double A, which is three points. Wow, Miss, Miss Wonderful Gal is taking an early lead. Uh-oh, wild card. <laughs> wild card. Bad things happen in the wild card chart. <laughs> really bad things sometimes. So let's roll. Oh, geez, 66. All right, 66 is go to highlight reel B. So we go to page B, or the highlight reel B, and roll on that chart. And we got a 62, which is trailing wrestler gets help from choice other wrestlers who descend from roof of arena into rig. Two points, and wrestler may use the use helping wrestler's abilities. Okay, so yeah, this is why we call wild card, and this is kind of where, where the fun narrative comes into play. Um, <laughs> okay, what was that, 62? Okay, so the Dominatrix gets help from a choice of wrestlers. So I think, I think Natasha Denoff, who really does not like 
Miss Wonderful Gal is going to come in and jump in and help the Dominatrix. So you have the hit woman, Natasha Denov, jumping into the ring to help out the Dominatrix against Miss Wonderful Gal, who's well in the lead. Why the referee doesn't call that, we don't know. But evidently, the hit woman is seeing that, that the Dominatrix is losing and doesn't want her kicked out of the league, so is coming in to help. And evidently, Maurice, the commissioner, is okay with this so far. All right, Agile. All right, so the Dominatrix does have Agile, and Miss Wonderful Gal does not, and it's a star, so it can be used at any time, so that's one point. Nope, oh, starting to come back a little bit for the Dominatrix. Uh, Agile, again! So, two more points. All right, signature. Refer to previous uh, fast action card. If wrestler scored point, then intensify move with signature, doubling uh, fast action card point total. So previous wrestler uh, got two points out of it. So she gets two more points out of it by doing her signature move, which I really don't have written down on them for these. All right, cheat. All right, the dominatrix is a cheat, and Miss Wonderful is not. So, that's another point. Wow, Dominatrix is really coming back. Uh-oh, wild card. Oh, God, no, not the wild card chart again. We got a 36 on the wild card. All right. 36 on the wild card. Okay, we look to see if the wrestler has powerful. She does have powerful. You can see right there. Unfortunately, she can't use it right now because it's a circle and we're on a square. Actually, no, this is a wild card, so I think this is if they have the stat, period. So we'll go with that. I may be wrong. If I'm wrong, you know, someone correct me. Uh, tosses object out of ring, then tosses various... Tosses opponent out of ring, then tosses various objects on top of wrestler on arena floor, scores D6 points. <laughs> so... Wow, one, two, three, four, five, six points from Miss Wonderful Gal throwing a bunch of crap on top of the Dominatrix. All right, camera cut out there for a little bit. So uh, Miss Wonderful Gal just scored six points, and it put her into a possible pin column or pin uh, space. So what we do then is it's possible she is trying to pin the dominatrix outside of the ring and what you go off of you go off of their tv rating so her the dominatrix treat tv rating is a you look at the chart here we got the kick out of 11 to 33 now you got three chances to kick out against the tv grid so first roll 44 does not kick out second 56 does not kick out up 66 does not kick out so Miss Wonderful Gal wins by a pin outside of the ring, which could be very, very bad because the commissioner said that he was going to kick the dominatrix out if she didn't win. Well, now, after the match is all done, we go to the post-match highlight reel. So roll the post-match highlight reel. We got a one, which takes us to reel X. And we roll on that one. We got a 23, which is <laughs> defeated wrestler livid after opponent makes belittling comments on TV. Increase wrestler's grudge grade by four points. Wow, I've never seen that. Okay, so evidently, Miss Wonderful Gal was talking some smack about the Dominatrix after the match. Didn't really like that. Increases her grudge grade by four points. Well, now... And that's basically how a match is run, and, and I've done I've done this you know several times, and like I said, there were special rules for uh, for for uh, tag team matches, for cage matches, and and it, as you've seen, it, it it's not really deep when it comes to how the wrestling is uh, resolved. There's very little choices the player makes, and some people may say, well, you know, gaming is all about choices. And I agree, gaming is all about choices. In this game, you don't have a lot of choices. Stick the people into the slots, and then basically let it run on autopilot, pulling the cards, rolling the dice, seeing what have you. Um, so once the match starts, as, as you can see, there was one choice I made. The rest, rest of it was all just kind of let it run on autopilot. But if you approach the game from the standpoint that you are the league commissioner 
just putting people and setting up matches and then letting see what happens and let the random tables take over, it opens up a huge world of narrative experience. So I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to because I don't want to lose the Dominatrix. <laughs> First of all, Dominatrix is one of the highest TV ratings um, in the league. She's also one of my only heels. Um, so I have a feeling that uh, the Dominatrix and Maurice are going to be having a nice long conversation and, and, and I'm, I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do with that. So anyways, folks. Uh, yeah, I know this is a little bit different, a little bit odd. I, I, I'm sure some of you uh, uh, not really <laughs> expecting me to do something on sports games. Um, but uh, we, may, we, we may be seeing more of my, my www.com uh, wrestling federation uh, playthroughs come up. And there's some other sports games that I'm going to get, so we may, we may be seeing more of this. No, I haven't completely given up on tactical, strategic Hex Encounter board games. I just need to do something a little bit different every once in a while. Let me know if you like it. Let me know if you don't like it. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, constructive criticisms down below in the comment section. You know I love hearing from you. And I will talk to everybody later. See ya!